So now it's time to show you a little bit more complicated integrals. You see before we were looking at just some of the simple ones. So these are the antiderivatives here of the function. So if you start off with this, the antiderivative is this. And again, the reason why is because the derivative of this is this. The derivative of that is that. The derivative of this is this. And the derivative of that is that. So in derivatives, so when we're doing differentiation, we had some tricks. I don't know if you remember that. We had things like the um, product rule and the quotient rule. And more importantly, we had the chain rule. So that was a rule that helped us with sort of a function within a function. Now, unfortunately, with integrals, there is no chain rule. Okay, so there's no, there's no sort of chain rule for, for integrals or antiderivatives. So this is, I think, one of the main things that makes integrals much harder for students than uh, derivatives. Because with der derivatives, it's just a matter of knowing a few simple rules, like product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule, and knowing what some of the simple things are, and you can always work out really complicated ones. But with integrals, it's a bit more difficult because of course, if you get something like a nice polynomial, it's easy, and a nice e to the x is easy, and sine of x, sine of x is easy, cos x is easy. But what if you have something more complicated, like sine of, I don't know, 3x? That's when it would be nice to have a chain rule sort of thing. Uh, same thing with here. What if I had, I don't know, um, 4x plus 1 to the power of n? You know, how would I deal with that? So there, there are some tricks. And so um, the tricks I'm going to be showing you for right now is going to be like a composite with linear functions. That's going to be the first little trick I'm going to show you. So there is no real chain rule, but there are some tricks we can use. Now, a trick that I'm not showing you right now, but I'll eventually be getting to is, um, I mean, there are some other ways of doing things. There's ways of solving integrals, we say, by substitution, or we can also do what's called integration by parts. Those are ways of doing more complicated integrals. But for right now, we're going to keep it fairly straightforward. So we're going to just take these basic ones here, and we're going to just add one level of complexity and see how that is totally doable. So uh, let's maybe do a little list of what the original ones were. So we were looking before at f of x, and we did a list of what the integral is of f of x dx. In other words, the antiderivative. So we had these basics like x to the n, and we had, uh, what else did we have next? We had e to the x, and we had 1 over x, and we had sine x, and we had cos x. Those are the basics. Of course, you can have other ones here, but I just want to show you a trick. So now remember that this integral was, in other words, the antiderivative is, well, you have to go one more. So it's n plus 1 over n plus 1. And don't forget, add the c because it's indefinite integral, we don't know where to start and stop. The integral of e to the x was just e to the x plus c. The integral of 1 over x was natural log of x. Integral of sine was negative cos. And the integral of cos was sine, or the antiderivative. So these are all the antiderivatives of these. Well, now what do we do with a composite with a linear function? What I mean by that, this is a new thing here, I just wanted to show you because I'm going to use this to generate these more complicated looking ones. Okay, so this is again going to be integral of f of x dx. But now we're going to give it something more complicated. We're going to say instead of just x to the n, we're going to say now linear, a linear function means, you know, like y equals mx plus b. Or in this case, we're actually going to say ax plus b. So this is going to be what we're going to use in general. a is a constant, b is a constant. Okay, those are just going to be constants. They're just going to be numbers. So this is the idea, is that if we have, instead of just x to the n, maybe we have, well, ax plus b to the n. We're going to see what we get there. And instead of e to the x, we're going to have e to the ax plus b. Instead of 1 over x, we're going to say 1 over ax plus b. Instead of sine x, we're going to say sine of a x plus b. Instead of cos, we're going to have cos of a x plus b. So do you see this is a composite with a linear function because see I'm 
this is in a sense some sort of chain rule type thing but the thing is the problem is there's no generic chain rule that always works for integrals what i'm showing you here is a special case this happens to work if you have a linear function composite like this these will work to get you an integral now the trick is this so this is actually a really easy trick is I always use what happens with, you know, something to the power of n. Well, it's the same thing. We have something to the power of n. And what do we do with that? We take the something to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1, and we just add a c. What we're going to do here, then, is do the same idea. So instead of just x, we're going to make it ax plus b. All that to the power of n plus 1, all that divided by n plus 1, all that plus c. So this looks like the exact same thing, except this is the key thing here. You do 1 over a. Always has to be this, always 1 over a. So e to the ax plus b, well, normally it goes e to the x. So here it's going to be e to the ax plus b. Whoops, I need to leave a little bit of space here. Except uh, before that, I always do 1 over a. So it's going to be e to the ax plus b all that plus c. Over here, instead of 1 over ax plus b, it's going to be, well, first of all, 1 over a, and then what does the integral do? Was well, ln of this. So it's going to be ln of ax plus b. All that plus c. Never forget that. And instead of just going from sine x to negative cos x, it becomes, well, don't forget about the 1 over a. So negative cos of ax plus b. So you see, I'm just using this trick here to help me to get that one. And if it's cos, it's 1 over a times sine of ax plus b plus c. And if you know any other generic tricks, it also works for here. So for example, there's something with uh, 1 over cos squared and how that's uh, related. Um, but let's just we'll just work with these five basic ones here. So these, they became a lot more complicated looking. And I wouldn't recommend you memorize these. I think that's that's too much. So what I would do is, you know, if you learn these ones, just remember if you have a linear function like this, and you just step one, do one over a, and then use this here to tell you it's like a blueprint. So instead of x becoming x to the n plus one over n plus one, it's ax plus b to the n plus one over n plus one. Instead of being e to the x, it's e to the ax plus b. Instead of being ln x, it's ln of ax plus b, and so on. So this is how we can deal with much more complicated looking ones. So let's see an example then with that. So here we have y equals e to the 2x minus 1 plus 1 over 3x. What is the integral of y dx? Well, here I have to find the antiderivative. How do I do that? Well, I better use that trick. So see, if I go back here, I have e to the, well, this is like ax plus b. So how do I do that? The integral of y dx is going to be, let's see now, I need to first start off with this. So what's the antiderivative of e to the 2x minus 1? Well, I use this trick right here. e to the 2x minus 1 will be, first of all, 1 over a, which is 2. So the very first step is to do 1 over 2. So I'll do that, 1 over 2. And it's supposed to be e to the, and basically I just do the same thing. So if it was e to the ax plus b, it becomes e to the ax plus b. So there, I'll just do that. So e to the 2x minus 1. That's my ax plus b here. Don't forget to add the plus c later. So I'm done already with that first one. That's this. Well, then I need to deal with the second one here. So how do I do that? Well, this is like 1 over ax. So plus. Let's see what we do here. Um, this is one of these here, 1 over ax. Now, I happen to have that b is 0. So this is like 1 over ax here. So what I do then is I can just say um, natural log, and I just have to throw a 1 over a in front. You might hear some squeaking. That's just a door in the background. I'm actually recording this in Sweden where there's some nice birds singing in the background. I don't know if you can hear them, but uh, actually nice. The only problem is we're in a little cottage and everything's sort of creaky and things sort of make some noise. But oh well. Um, so let's deal with this one. So first of all, the a term is 3, so it's going to be 1 over 3 times, and how do we deal with a 1 over x? It is, well, 1 over x becomes ln x. So 1 over ax plus b becomes ln ax plus b. So in this case, then, it's going to be ln of 3x. That's it. 
And don't forget, just add the plus c. So this is the integral here. That's it, that's all there is to do. So this may have seemed complicated, and I think it really helps to just get lots of practice. Just try lots of these and then you'll see that they're, they're not nearly as bad as what they appear to be. I mean, I think a lot of students really struggle with these because just the notation may look a little bit sort of hairy, I guess you could say. Let's do one more. So we have f primed of x is this, and we want f of x. So here we're given the derivative and we want the original function. Guess what? That's the same thing we have to do, find the antiderivative. So f of x is going to be same thing here. We take the antiderivative of this. So we're going to start with cos. Well, a cos of something becomes sine of something, except I have a linear function. So it's cos of ax plus b. What is the answer going to be? It's going to be, again, I've just given you a simpler version here. So cos is going to be 1 over a times sine of that chunk. So we'll do it here. So it's 1 over, in this case, 4, times a sine of 4x plus 8. So do you see how I actually gave you a much simpler example here? And if you think that's the answer, we're not quite there yet, don't forget, plus c. That's our final answer here. Again, you can always check that you did it right. And the way you check that you did it right is just take the derivative of this, and it better give you this. That means you've done it right. Just like up above here, the derivative of this had better be just this. And that's how you do these. So I hope that helps to explain at least some of the basics of these. Now what we can do then is we can actually go one step further and what I'm going to show you in the next video is going to be something I think more interesting is how do you actually find that plus c? So we're going to see that in the next video. Haha, <laughs> see it. But uh, we're going we're gonna to work with that in the next video and we'll be able to deal with this. And you'll see actually this is no problem at all. These are pretty easy to do.